Welcome back, Button Club members, to another review video here on the channel. I am your host, Shadow Fury. Thank you so much for hanging out with us and joining us today. I hope you are well. Before we get started, I just want to say thank you to all of the love that the channel has been getting so far. We are close to 1,400 subscribers at the time of this video, and it's just been so overwhelming and blown me away with all the love and attention that you've been giving us. So before we start, I just want to say a quick thank you. Today's video is all about unboxing and reviewing the Razer Kitsune. So if you have seen previously on the channel, we have unboxed the Kami edition of the Razer Kitsune, and we were fortunate enough to get the Chun-Li version. Big shout outs to James from The Compound for sponsoring this video and supplying us with this product so we can do a review for you guys. Um, yeah, so check out The Compound on Twitch. I am part of their Nerdly News podcast every Wednesday at eight. So if you're looking to get more Button Club information as far as other Nerdly talk, please check that out. So like I was saying, we already unboxed the Kami version of the Razer Kitsune. And uh, while this has been a really, really cool controller, I did find the visuals on the Kami a little on the lackluster side. The print quality was just kind of like really low and dull. So I'm excited to unbox the uh, Chun-Li version of that. And I hope that she is just as pretty as she looks here on the box. So without further ado, let's get crack into that and then we'll review the product. Uh, the first thing I'll have you note, if you want to look right here, get a little close up, it's hard to see. We used a razor last time to open up the razor uh, controller, but we don't even need to. There's these cool little pull tabs here that re <laughs> relieve the, uh, the, the tape so we can open this, which I actually saw through um, other people's unboxings. When I do reviews for the channel, I don't just go into it with what I think. I want to, you know, see what other people are thinking and saying about it and see if I end up feeling the same way. So that was something I learned from watching some other unboxing videos. All right, tape part done. Let's get her out and free. Ooh, okay. And I'll show you guys before I take it out. There is your girl. Chun-Li. So I gotta say, I am instantly far more impressed with the looks and visuals of the Chun-Li version, hands down. It still has that same matte finish. Um, so the colors are, I don't know, maybe because the colors are brighter on here, they uh, come a little bit closer to resembling what it does on the package here. I'll put these side by side for you guys to see. Yeah, I think that's a lot more accurate. I really, really do. And just pretty, she's a class act. Just look at her, fixing her hair. Absolutely love it. One of the originals from the you know Street Fighter II era. All right, so let's peel this part back here to reveal, yeah, this foam padding. Very, very nice and also included, just like the Cami video. I don't wanna like really spend too much time going over all of the same stuff. If you're looking for that information, I do suggest you just go out and, and seek out that video, give it a watch, let me know what you think and use this as a tool to see what we think about the product on itself. USB-C cable, cool. Yeah, she's pretty man, she is pretty. So one of the things I mentioned in our original unboxing video was the price tag of these were 300. That was incorrect, okay? So the all black version of the Razer Kitsune is your $300 price point. And if you want the Street Fighter VI exclusive um, skins on it like this, like the Chun-Li and Kami, those are $330. So, you know, a little extra for the um, use of licensing and things like that. All right, let's put this stuff away for now and let's just start off with the review, okay? So the first thing that I like and enjoy about the Razer Kitsune is its overall footprint and size. If you wanted to compare this to the like junk food snack box micro, uh, this guy comes in at a much larger size, okay? Which I really don't mind. Um, it's almost just as portable as that other leverless controller that we were just speaking of but with a little more heft to it. And, and I kind of actually like that. It's got a decent weight to it, even though it is very light for its size, I would say it's got a decent weight to it. And I do like the fact that there's all of this 
wrist room right here where Chun Li's picture and her name is. When I'm playing this uh, at home, because I do predominantly play on my lap, I have all that room to rest. The surface area is, you know, rather on the slippery, like not slippery, but it's not super grippy either. So my palms and wrists rest right on the controller and I'm able to play comfortably and not feel so rigid or, or locked in. So that goes to talk about the surface of it, the overall footprint. I feel like if you were to play this on your desktop, uh, depending on your actual setup, it may or may not be comfortable, right? Um, if you are sitting far back and you wanted to have that little extra hang off on the desk, I probably wouldn't recommend it because it's gonna do a little bit of this. But because it's got all that extra room there, down here on the bottom, where the snack box I think pretty much cuts off right here, you know, you are gonna be extending your arms a little bit further out if you're playing on your desk, right? Um, another great feature is the non-slip padding. This is like some of the best non-slip padding I've seen on arcade sticks or arcade style peripherals because it covers the entire thing. It's very, very grippy and it doesn't, um, it's got these like little tiny circular dimples in it. And I think that texturing is also really nice for grip and it's not something that's super soft and padded that's gonna collect like dust and debris. If you're familiar with the modern day hitbox style leverless controllers, their soft foam pad on the bottom, I feel like, you know, just grabs a lot of dust and, 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 and debris and ends up kind of like um, peeling off around the edges. Sometimes I see at the bottom of them and I wonder how long those people have had their hitbox brand leverless for because the rubber padding on the bottom is already starting to kind of like deteriorate, you know? The biggest selling point for this controller and I would say its biggest attributes that set it apart from the other leverless style controllers are the fact that it uses optical switches. Everyone that has tried out this leverless controller, myself, my brother Kevin, and, and numerous people at uh, the Button Club Weeklies thought that the switches felt, sounded super nice and were very, very responsive. It takes the littlest of effort to press this button and to instantly get uh, what you're looking for from that button press, where if you were to compare that to the Snackbox Micro, I would say, which has Cherry MX, I think low profile mechanical switches, you actually will depress that button pretty far down before you get the signal to the controller, to the game, that actuation. I just find that this thing is super responsive. Like as soon as you press the button, you know you've hit it. And if you go back and watch the Cami video unboxing, we actually plug it into a PlayStation 5 to give our initial thoughts on how it felt. And there was a part where I was moving Ken with the lightest touch and you could just see the, the character moving. It was, it was such a gentle, it was probably close to that if I had to try and recreate that. But I do encourage you to go check out that video, you know? so. The optical switches, Razer optical switches, are a huge, huge selling point for this. Another selling point for this, based on the switches, is that if you don't like these switches, they are hot swappable. So you can get a different switch to put in here as long as it's a similar low profile switch to fit, okay? Which I thought was super cool. Uh, another thing that we talked about in the Cami video was the fact that all, as of right now, all that Razer is offering when it comes to these keycaps is just the standardized black, okay? If you're familiar with the Punk Workshop buttons, people have found that with these switches, those Punk Workshop button uh, plungers were able to fit on the micro switch and you could put that on here to try and give yourself a bit of a different look or feel because the, the black contrasts so heavy here against the light bright blue um, colors of the Chun-Li version. So the buttons really stand out and you know, that's a personal preference thing you can think of that what you want, right? Another very innovative feature for this particular control that I've never seen on anything else is the USB-C locking mechanism here on the back. This is a super, super cool feature and, and very unique. It just takes this one little flick of this unlock switch upward on the actual hatch door itself and that's where your USB-C is going. So this is cool and unique for a few reasons. Number one, it's gonna keep your USB-C cable plugged in at all times. So if you go to rip it out, it's not coming out, you'll be more likely to break something in here than to have that disconnect. Um, if this was on your lap and you went to go stand up, maybe in, in anger, losing on a, a ranked match or something, this not being so easy to detach 
if you were to go like this or whatever and yank it, you're gonna be either uh, hopefully unplugging it from your console or system first before you know, tearing it off of your desk and things like that. Um, and I do find it as another thing to have to do before you uh, engage in your tournament gameplay. So when you are setting up to go sit down and play a tournament match, you're gonna have to do that. When you're done with it, uh, you could leave it plugged in. I'm not the person to, to do that because I would hate for it to hit something and break. So I would be the type of person to be locking and unlocking this mechanism door each and every time before setup, which could be a little bit, you know, it's just extra work, take it as you will. I think another reason why this feature is so cool is because we talked about having issues with connectivity in other USB-C style leverless controllers, okay? Um, my brother himself has actually had an issue issue with the USB-C connector on his Victrix, which was corrected in the Victrix uh, arcade stick purple one that we, re that we opened and did a review here on the channel that actually has like a rubber gasket um, that supports the USB-C plug inside the receiver. And I think that that's what this is also doing too. Um, it's supporting the USB-C cable connection into the leverless controller, so it doesn't create that drag weight from the cable, and that's where we'll start getting disconnections. It's happened on um, several of the junk food arcade snack boxes I've owned, my friends have owned, and they've either had to junk the whole thing, get a new PCB, or send it out for warranty to have Snackbox um, fix that problem because that free-floating um, USB connector it's, it's a very, very small piece of equipment and it is pretty dainty. So the last thing you wanna have is start having uh, connectivity issues when you're purchasing these controllers because they are not cheap. This guy being 330, the standard version being 300 and the Victrix being 400 you really don't wanna have those kinds of issues. So another feature that I really like about this controller is all of the function buttons up top over here. And they're all just very cleanly laid out here at the top of the arcade stick. What I also think is really cool is that each button kinda of has its own shape and look to it. So that just kind of makes it easier to find when you're new to the stick. You know that these three circular ones are, you know, that's the PlayStation L3, R3, and yeah, the options and start over here. They're just different shaped buttons, but they are made of quality. I think as far as how they're laid out, it does feel a little bit weird to have touchpad right above the left hand instead of the right hand, something that I'm used to doing with my right hand. I think the reason for having these right here and so close is you're seeing a lot right now with other leverless controllers, extra buttons, okay? Um, Capcom regulations has allowed for 11 action buttons per controller as what's based off of the PlayStation 5 pad, right? So if you wanted to have touchpad be, let's say drive parry, right? Because I'm already in the, in the directionals here. I don't have to think to myself right now, man, I wish this thing had an extra button over here, over here to hit drive parry. It would be just as easy to hit the touchpad right here above um, down and left to hit that or you know, drive impact if you didn't wanna have it over here and you wanted to use your last two buttons for all three punches and three kicks. It is a different size button and a different feel to it, but you could technically remap these other buttons here to serve purpose for those other functions in the game so you don't need to feel like you need a, but, uh, you know, a leverless controller with a bunch of extra buttons on it. So out of all the things that everyone at Button Club has said, they like how its shape, its footprint, its design, they love the switches and the responsiveness, they love the USB-C cable. The only thing that was talked about when it came to this leverless controller that people didn't like or weren't a fan of is its price point. Everyone that I talked to basically said that they didn't think it was worth its $300. And this one being at the 330 price point like I mentioned earlier. The recommended price point that all of the players that have tried this that said that they would buy on this, they, they would purchase it if it was $250 which it isn't. And right now, if you want to spend $250 on a leverless controller, it um, decreases the options that you have of what you can purchase right now. In my mind, I, I had a hard time sitting with this also. Is it worth the 300? Is it worth the 330? Um, there are other controllers out there and we've gotten so many comments on the other uh, arcade stick uh, reviews and unboxes that we've done where people are talking about this hot 42 leverless controller or the um, 
the, the key box. There's so many other smaller companies or individuals that are making leverless controllers right now at great price points with a little more flexibility and the options that you can get. And it comes in way less than this thing does. And I think that that is obviously more attractive to people because if it's your first leverless controller, you are taking a risk, right? Is it worth this money? Do I buy something less expensive to see if I like it? And then later on I can upgrade. That's kind of where the variation comes in. Even my own brother who, you know, has been playing leverless since the beginning of the Street Fighter, his Street Fighter journey was basically like, even if they had a reU one for 330, he would look for it used because he feels like $250 is right in that pocket price point that he's comfortable with spending. And many other people who have tried this with me have said the same thing. What you have to consider is although this uh, Razer Kitsune is doing a lot of groundbreaking new features for leverless, there are some things that are a miss here that other leverless controller companies are excelling in. Um, the fact that this only has PlayStation 5 and PC support is kind of a turnoff um, because there are some games at locals and at, you know, at, at your friend's house that are still being played on PlayStation 4. You don't need a PS5 to enjoy Guilty Gear Strive and things like that, you know, uh, there, uh, or even Street Fighter 6 itself. It is available on uh, PlayStation 4. So if you have that and you want to get a cool kid controller, you're not really going to be able to get that because this isn't going to work on there. Now, Razer themselves has said that they do plan on um, maybe looking into that in the future. Brooks also uh, was trying to come out with some ways that this could work on the PlayStation uh, 4 and other consoles. But it's just kind of something else that you really have to think about when you're looking to make this purchase. When you're comparing this to the other controllers, the Hitbox brand leverless controller is available on PlayStation 4, PC, but it needs a Brook converter in order to work on PS5, right? Uh, if you're looking at the Snackbox Micro, that's gonna set you back like 285, 275 to be uh, played on all types of consoles, which comes in pretty close to this price point, but maybe you like the smaller form factor, so you're gonna go that way. It is slightly uh, less expensive and is available on more consoles. Another big thing with coming to the uh, accessibility with some of these leverless controllers is that if a Brooks FGC, you know, wingman converter is, you know, already in, um, uh, in, 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 in your hand, you have one at home and you've been using it, why would you be encouraged to spend the extra money on a product that has a PCB for the PS5 and it's costing you close to $300, let's say, when you can buy the version that works on PlayStation 3 and PC, you spent your $60 on your Wingman controller, and now you can save that money on the initial investment of the peripheral while still having it accessible to the consoles that you prefer to play on or that we're all playing on in tournament. The last downfall about the Razer Kitsune as of right now is the uh, limited ways that you can customize it, okay? So what we said in the Kami unboxing is that this is not a plexiglass clear piece that you can change artwork on. This is a finish that's all part of the metal top plate. And as of right now, you either get the black version for 300 or the Kami and Chun-Li version for 330 and that's it. As of right now, Razer is selling different skins that you can put over this, vinyl skins, but we all know that that's not like really what we want as a consumer, I, per, I would say. Um, you know, vinyl can tear, can, can rip and stuff like that, and it's just not the same type of finish that we want, especially when it's just very standard Razer designs or seeking out a artist on Etsy or something to design something for you and then having to put that big sticker on, kind of a drawback. You're also not gonna be able to like drill any holes into to this thing to add your extra buttons like we spoke about earlier, like L3 and R3. Um, you know, if you check out Button Club Weekly, you see that, you know, Ricky and Cole, they have drilled extra buttons into their setup. So they have a drive impact button. You're really not gonna be able to do this because there's no way to add that wiring. As soon as you drill a hole into this thing, you're voiding your warranty. And, and the mother, the, the, the PCB board on this is just not designed for it. So, you know, if you are someone that loves to customize, you wanna purchase something and make it your own, that's another thing that you're missing out on this. For my final product review for the Razer Kitsune, regardless of which version or variation you get, uh, I would have to give it a four out of five button club buttons, okay? This thing does a lot of things right and has been very innovative and creative in some of the new ways to create leverless controllers for the fighting game community. 
but with that progression forward came some regression in some other features like compatibility on PS4, um, you know, different buttons and layouts and artwork and stuff like that. Basically what you're purchasing, what you see here is what you're gonna get and that's basically it. That's not wrong per se, but that's just my opinion on what this thing has to offer. Those are the facts on what this thing has to offer, but that's like my opinion, is it worth it? Would I personally buy it for 300? Probably not. I'm very, very content with my uh, Victrix Leverless right now. And if I was to spend any money on something else, I'd, I'd, I would invest in something that's a little bit different than that. But maybe that's not your journey. Maybe that's not how you feel about it. So tell me what you think about the Razer Kitsune. Leave me a comment down below and let me know if you own one, what you think of it, if you've thought about purchasing it, and if this video has been helpful in um, you know, giving you the information that you need to decide on whether or not this is something that you're looking to pull the trigger on. That's gonna wrap it up for this product review and unboxing here on the channel. Thank you again so much for all the love and attention. Like this video, subscribe for more, hit the bell notification so you're notified every time we do this. Leave a comment, share with your friends. I'll catch you guys on the next Button Club video. Keep pressing them buttons, folks. Take care.